happy monday wait what the fuck it is not monday if you know me you know that i always mix my days up it's just it's just a real thing my head up here is just constantly lights are on but no one's home okay i'm a smart girl but lights are on no one's home you know what i mean anyways i thought it would be fun to get ready today we leave for bora bora today with tart which is so insane and i was like you know what i kind of want to film like a long form get ready with me for youtube i just got done with the workout this morning i went and got some coffee and i had to edit a couple ads and then i did a q a on my instagram and was like ask me some questions i think it'd be so fun for you guys to get to know me on like another platform and a longer form where i can just chat your little ears off because anybody who also knows me knows i'm a talker i will talk for as long as you let me you know what i mean like i will just i will just ask you questions i'll talk about everything i'll answer all your questions until you're like girl i gotta go i gotta go and then i'm like okay and then I leave every social situation like, did they hate me? Did they like think I was annoying? Did I like chat their ear off? You know what I mean? The answer is probably yes. Anyways, what feels weird is I'm not used to um, like being on YouTube and longer form content. So it feels weird right now that I'm able to be on my phone. I'm so used to like, also if you can't tell I have like caffeine jitters right now, I feel like it's so fucking obvious. I also have ADHD. So like that's going to play a key part in doing long form content because I will be all over the place. Scott's going to have so much fun editing this video. <laughs> Anyways, I asked you guys on my Instagram stories. Oh, also look at this cute little coffee bean jelly cat that I saw at LGO this morning. I asked you guys what you want to know about me. So we're doing a Q and A and you guys in the last hour have asked so many questions which i appreciate so let's get into it while we get ready i'm gonna set my phone like right here and i'm just gonna <laughs> try to try to multitask which i'm not very good at also i got a memory card with like a lot of storage so hopefully my camera doesn't start recording canon don't give up on me now baby please work i'm realizing that i packed a lot of my skincare already for the trip so i'm gonna go grab it from my suitcase and then we'll be right back okay we're gonna put my phone on the octo buddy on the mirror the caffeine jitter is so bad right now like it's not okay okay so first off i feel like i should kind of just introduce myself my name's emily kaiser i'm 25 years old i'm an aquarius i just turned 25 in january and i have a feeling this is going to be the best year yet you know what i mean like i feel like 25 is just going to be fun i have one son he's two and a half i literally love him with everything in me he is my whole world and i love being a mom i feel like i was so scared to be a mom because i became a mom at 20 actually <laughs> that's a lie i became a mom at 21 and honestly it was just like i felt super young but at the same time i felt so ready to like have a son or have a baby i didn't know what i was gonna have obviously i'm like i just knew i just knew i was gonna birth a son i'm married i've been married for four and a half years to my husband brady if you know brady you love him he is literally an angel he's a virgo man and we just love him like usually aquarius and virgo aren't compatible <laughs> But we are compatible and my husband and I just like match each other's energy so well he is like the calm to my crazy and like I said if you know Brady love him he's 27 so we have like a little bit of an age gap but nothing crazy and I just love that man so much he's the best he actually has a migraine right now so he's in the bedroom trick <laughs> Okay, I feel like number one is like a personal question because I get this question all the time. Anytime I do a Q&A and it's always like, do you and your husband want more kids? Brady and I absolutely want more kids. And what's funny is when we first met, I always said I wanted four kids. Like for some reason, that was like the magic number in my mind. And maybe it's because my mom had four kids. I have... I have from my mom and dad's marriage two sisters and then my mom had obviously me with my dad and then my mom and my stepdad had my half sister maddie and so i feel like just seeing like the dynamic of my mom raising four girls which is crazy bless her fucking soul because we were all psychotic in our own way i feel like in my head i always was like oh i want four kids perfect like two boys two girls acting as if i could like plan the gender or something but now that I have a son and I see how hard it is being a mom and how much balance it takes in life, especially with me working full time, doing social media and providing for my family, I have just decided that two is probably going to be the magic number for us. I feel like that's what I'm going to be able to handle. I also just feel like in this world and I'm sorry, in this economy and just like life, I don't want more than what I can handle. I want to be able to give my kids like the best life possible. So I feel like for us, two is just what sounds good right now, and that is what we're comfortable with. But Brady sometimes lingers on the side of having three kids. He's like, I don't know, Em, I kind of think three is like a good number. 
so I guess we'll see I try to never like give myself super long term like yes this is what I'm doing because I just feel like life throws curl life throws curveballs at you and sometimes you just got to go with the flow so I'm not really giving myself like a specific number but definitely definitely not four and definitely not above four that's where I draw the line you know what I mean I was supposed to get microneedle today and I had to reschedule my appointment because I don't like I don't know why I thought I was gonna be able to get microneedled before I go to Bora Bora like I'm sorry isn't Bora Bora pretty close to the equator like I think I'm gonna burn my skin off there so getting microneedling right before that was like the dumbest idea I could have ever done but luckily my esthetician is like so understanding and she was like no let's just do it when you get back which I'm like good plan good plan will you teach Trig to be a Swifty is one of these questions Trig already is a Swifty that's a trick question he already is one um, which actually brings me to when Trig was a newborn, I kid you not, my sister would play Taylor Swift for him all the time. So my sister was a PICU nurse and um, she still is a nurse. She's just not in the PICU anymore. It was honestly just like so hard on her mental health, but that's like a Megan story time. Maybe I need to do like a Q&A with my sister. I feel like I need to do a Q&A with like everyone in my life because I just have like the best people in my life. You know what I mean? Anyways, my sister was a PICU nurse and she, when Trig was younger and we were switching him from like breastfeeding to formula because I was just like not producing enough milk. My sister, when he was crying a lot, would help me. And she was like, you need to play Taylor Swift. Like I swear to God, it like just calms the babies down. And guess what? It worked. It worked. So I feel like Trig was just like born to be a Swifty. You know what I mean? It was like ingrained in his head by like two months old. So I just, I, he is a Swifty. Like I don't need to turn him into one. He is and always will be one. You know what I mean? But like with that being said, he also is going to love like Drake, 21 Savage, J. Cole, Lil Uzi Vert. You know what I mean? Like he's going to be cultured in the music department. Okay. I love this question. It says, what outside help do you have? I feel like it's so important for influencers to be transparent about the help that they have because as much as I think that like people don't owe anyone anything on the internet like we don't have to be transparent about like everything in our life like we're allowed to keep some things private I think that it brings a sense of like realism when you're transparent with your audience about like you have a nanny you have a housekeeper you have an assistant like you have someone helping you so I feel like that actually leads me into a topic that I've talked about before but before when I first started social media and we were living in Utah at the time Brady was working like three jobs and that is how he kind of you know financially supported our family I was a stay-at-home mom when I very first started social media I some people still would consider me a stay-at-home mom but social media is what fully provides for our family and I'm so grateful for that I'm so grateful that like somehow by the grace of like whoever is up above, I was able to do this job and it was able to work for me because I really just never thought it would. I just like kind of started making videos and, and you know, with me just being consistent and just like finding my groove with it, it was able to pay off and I was able to build you guys as an audience, which I'm so grateful for literally every single day. Anyways, with that being said, I didn't have help when I first started. I, you know, actually that's a lie. I every once in a while, I think it was like two times a week, I would have a babysitter come so that I could go to the gym because when Trig was really young and he wasn't able to go to like the gym daycare yet, like I just wasn't comfortable yet, I would have a babysitter come and watch him. Um, and that was just when we lived in Utah. I had a couple college girls come and watch him every once in a while. But when we moved to Arizona, that was kind of when Brady and I started to reevaluate like our plans, like career wise and things like that. When we initially moved to Arizona, it was for a job opportunity for Brady. And I never really talked about it, but Brady was in sales. So he was going to do solar sales here in Arizona. He had a really good opportunity with a friend of his. And that was just kind of like our plan when we moved here. I obviously knew that I was going to continue doing social media. And at the time, I was providing for my family and you know like things were going well but it wasn't enough that I felt comfortable like making a huge move and just being like oh yeah social media is gonna like support us like I had no idea so my husband was still working and that was like his plan he he was you know semi-passionate about it but at the time my husband also owned a car detailing business he ran that for five years I feel like a lot of people don't know that about Brady um, and he was amazing at it. He had like two vans fully running in Utah County, detailing cars. And then eventually, why is my skin peeling? He moved it to Arizona and that was kind of his plan. The fuck? Why is my skin peeling? 
Okay, I'm gonna have to wipe it on this freaking towel, which I don't want to do, but I'm like constantly making sure my camera is still recording because I'm so scared of running out of storage, even though Brady bought me this SD card. He's like, Emma has a lot of storage, and I'm like, I'm just scared. I'm scared it's gonna stop recording. Anyways, I need to get to the point with these questions. Do I have help? <laughs> I just don't know how to like not take 27,000 um, side roads when I'm answering a question. Um, but I just wanted to get some backstory. So when we moved to Arizona, that is when Brady basically decided either I'm going to stay at home and help you or we're going to have to hire a full-time nanny. And I was fine with hiring a nanny, but I think the thing with social media and also the privilege with it is you're working from home most of the time. So it's kind of hard to like find that balance with like having a nanny because for me, I kind of feel like it's silly to like have a nanny come over and not be out of the house. Like I remember when I was a nanny all through college and sometimes when the people were home and they weren't like in an office working and our house isn't big enough, like I don't have this dedicated filming space. I kind of just like film around my house. I always thought like, wait, why am I here? Which, which now that I'm a mom, I understand like, oh, they're working like they're here, but they're not here. But anyways, I just always kind of felt weird about that. And I also just didn't want necessarily like someone else like raising my child and like possibly missing milestones. Like I wanted my husband home for that. So, you know, we reevaluated a lot of our plans and that's when we decided that Brady was going to be a stay at home dad. And honestly, I'm so grateful every single day for that. Brady is just such an amazing father and I'm so grateful that we both just get to be home with our child like that is such a privilege that a lot of people don't get to have and it's because of social media it's because of the privilege of social media and like the fact flexibility of the job 100% so Brady stays at home and we don't have a nanny so we don't have help in that way we have a babysitter come like every once in a while maybe like for date nights or something but honestly a lot of times we have family help which again that is help it takes a village to raise a kid and not everyone has a village so i'm grateful that now that we live in arizona we're by so much of my family but with that being said all of my family works full time so a lot of the times it's just brady and i like juggling our schedules together and making things work and i feel like we do a really great job at it there was obviously some growing pains with that like you don't just all of a sudden like become a stay-at-home parent and things are just like fine and dandy when you are both working in the house like that's a hard dynamic because we live in a small house we're literally together like all day which is great i freaking love my husband but i feel like anybody who has two parents that are at home and like are trying to juggle that dynamic there's some growing pain so i always tell people like there's some growing pains with that but you'll figure it out be patient with each other and i feel like now that we're like we've lived in Arizona for over a year and a half. We really have a system down with Brady being a stay at home dad. And like, we are very clear about what our roles are and not gender roles. We don't do that here. Um, but we're just very clear about like what we do every single day to help how we can help each other. We're very communicative with each other. And I feel like we have great communication and that is extremely important. So anyways, to answer the question, the help that we have is Basically, we have a babysitter come every once in a while and then my mom helps when we go out of town So a lot of people ask like who's watching trig when you're going on brand trips It is usually my mom or my mother-in-law is so amazing and she will watch trig for us and we'll fly her in from utah And she will just help out and that is seriously like so great and so amazing because Then I feel like trig gets time with his grandparents and he gets to see them which he doesn't get to do like super often because like I said my mom works full-time and then brady's mom lives in utah so it's just like a good opportunity for him to get close with his grandparents. I think that that's like super important for grandchildren. I think it's good for them to have those relationships and also just get used to being around like other family members that we trust, of course. Do you and Brady ever argue? This is so funny. I feel like I should save some of the couple questions for when Brady and I do a Q&A together. But yes, we absolutely do argue. Every couple argues. I feel like if married couples say they don't argue, I'm not a marriage therapist, but I've been friends with people before where they're like, my husband and I never argue. We never fight about anything. And I'm like, I, I just feel like that's not normal. Like, I feel like either someone's not saying something or you're not communicating enough because I feel like Brady and I have stellar communication in our marriage and that's taken time. We've been married for four years and I feel like just in the last like two years, we've just gotten so good at communicating with each other. I don't know, there's something off about when people say that they never fight. And I can't tell if it's like, you know, like I sometimes feel like it's kind of a flex. It's like a, oh, we never fight. And I'm like, that 
in my book that's just like not really a flex like you should be fighting with your partner so that you can learn how to like work through issues with that being said okay don't get me wrong if the fights are toxic and they're about reoccurring issues you need to nip that in the bud is it nip that in the butt or nip that in the bud i don't know um, but yes, Brady and I do argue. We argue about stupid shit. Like who unloaded the dishwasher? Did we load it correctly? We definitely fight. And then obviously we fight about more serious things sometimes. Like we've been through a lot in our four years of marriage. Brady and I have left a religion. We've gone through, you know, issues like that. That is just marriage, but like nothing that we weren't able to tackle and work through and nothing that hasn't made our marriage stronger. I think that sometimes fights and hardships are what grow you closer together like i said we've been married for four years and i feel closer to my husband now than i ever have before like i just love him more every single day and i'm just obsessed with him so yeah i was thinking about that the other night i was like i'm just so fucking obsessed with my husband like he is just the best so anybody who tells you that that diminishes um no your love should never diminish obviously hardships will ebb and flow but i just feel like you fall more and more in love with your partner as you go through life with them okay i can't believe my skin is like fucking peeling right now you guys i don't know what's happening so if my makeup looks bad in this video look i'm not a youtube makeup guru okay like that's that's not here i do the same makeup look like every single fucking day how did you figure out life after graduating college okay i'll try to keep this short and brief but college was weird for me okay i feel like all of college i did not know what i wanted to do with my life and i felt so much pressure to figure it out especially having parents who i felt like they were just so good at what they do and they had so many passions like my dad graduated from college as an engineer aeronautical engineer he worked on airplanes and that's where he found his like love of flying my mom was a stay-at-home mom and then when her and my dad got divorced she went back to school she is so fucking smart she like basically runs a law firm now and is their accountant and has been for like so long and she is like superwoman she's literally the only reason that me and my sisters were able to like pass math classes growing up because that woman is so freaking good with numbers and math which is not me and then now my dad's an attorney, which he's just so good at what he does and so passionate about it. And I just think he's such an amazing guy. So, you know, going into school, there was so much pressure to like, what do I do? Do I try to become a lawyer? Do I be a nurse? Because like one of my sisters is a nurse. My other sister's a dental hygienist. So I'm like, do I do that? Like, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And sometimes I feel like that's why, you know, I'm good at social media is because I was never like I never did bad in school, but my grades were like all B's with like two C's usually one or two C's um so like I was not a straight A student I don't even think I got an A in dance class because I was like late all the time so I was definitely scared for college I didn't know what I wanted to do and I'm not gonna lie if you've watched any of like my podcast that I've been on or things like that I've talked a lot about switching to the Mormon faith and converting when I was 17 which I'm not Mormon anymore um brady and i left the church when we first got married and if you want like story times on that like i've said i've done like a bunch of podcasts like girls camp the weekly trash cheers with avery like i've talked a lot about it but basically i kind of feel like when i went to college in utah i kind of just thought oh i'm gonna find a husband and i'm gonna get married like never did i ever think i would be like the supporter of my family i would have the confidence to start social media but i feel like with that being said going into college i just like didn't know what i wanted to do i didn't know what my passion was i didn't know how to find that or locate it so don't feel pressure i guess is my point when you're starting college to figure everything out i feel like life is all about pivoting and growing i switched my major like probably six times and you know i didn't end up graduating i'm a college dropout and i feel like i've done pretty good with my life but not in the normal way like i feel like there's so much pressure in society to you know figure out what you want to do and go get a college education and i think that that is 100 percent important like i will instill education in my kids i think it's very important sometimes i even still think about just like going back to school and finishing my degree because like why not it's a privilege to have education and it's always a smart thing to do in this day and age but yeah like don't don't feel like you have to have it all figured out hi baby how can i help you how can i help you anyways long story short don't feel scared for after college like obviously try to have a game plan i feel like i had a semi game plan 
but like I'm a college dropout I got married I had a child young I started my career a little bit later I mean I'm only 25 but like I figured out what I wanted to do after college and I feel like that happens in life like even my father for example like he graduated as an aeronautical engineer but then it wasn't until later that he figured out he wanted to go back to law school and same with my mother like she you know had me and my sisters her and my dad got divorced and she was like shit i need to figure out what i'm gonna do she started a daycare and home to make more money and support herself and then after that she was like i'm gonna go back to school and she made it work and i'm like i'm so proud of her for doing that like you just kind of have to pivot in life so don't feel that pressure to like have it all figured out i literally went through so many full-time jobs before i was like you know what, I think I'm gonna try like social media. And even before I became full-time on social media and it kind of like took off a little bit more for me, I applied at a furniture store and I was like, you know what, this is what I'm gonna do in the meantime to like bring in some extra money, keep myself busy and kind of like give myself time to figure out what I wanna do. And that's also what I did in college. Like while I was waiting to try to figure out what major I wanted to do or things like that. I took breaks from college and I went and worked full time at car dealerships and as an executive assistant and things like that so that I could kind of get a good head on my shoulder, see what the workforce was like and you know, kind of decide like what I wanted to do. And I think a lot of people don't know that about me. I think a lot of people think that I just like dropped out of college and then just like started making videos on the internet. But I've talked about before on TikTok, like I worked a lot of jobs. I also went to dental assisting school when I was almost pregnant with my son and then graduated right when I got pregnant with Trig. And then that was also kind of like on the back end of the pandemic. So it was really hard getting the job. So I worked in a call center the entire time, pretty much that I was pregnant almost. Um, and then like social media just out of nowhere, like it's just what I decided to do. And now that's my career and I'm like so grateful, but I feel like everything I've done before that has led me to now. So life is all about just like figuring your shit out and just like pivoting and and testing all the different waters if you can i know that that's also like a privilege to be able to do that okay a lot of people have asked about moving so we are moving we are looking at buying houses right now you know like we have our pre-approval we're looking at so many houses and trying to figure out what we're going to do and i'm not gonna lie it's been a little bit of a stressful process only because number one the housing market where is my eyelash curler Number one, the housing market is kind of psychotic. And number two, I just feel like I just cannot find exactly what I want. So some people have asked what we're looking for in a house. And I feel like the biggest things are I want a big yard. I want Wesley and Trig and our future children to have room to run around, play, you know, like have a playhouse and things like that. Like that's just always been my dream. And I grew up with a lot of grass in my backyard and it was so fun. That's where I like taught myself to do like back handsprings and I would practice my dance routines and I would make music videos with my sisters and you know, like it was just so fun and I want to give my kids like that same experience with a big backyard. So that's important to us. Um, it's important to us to have room to grow in the house, you know, be able to be there for a really long time. It's also important to me to have a one story. I no hate on two stories i just like think about the realisticness of a two story and i just like the idea of a one story better but if you guys have like any advice on that let me know i've just only lived in one stories and i feel like actually one time when we first had trig or actually when we were pregnant with trig we lived in a two-story townhouse and i hated it like i just felt like it was so hard to manage and just with a dog and baby it would have been hard and so I just love a one story. I also have decided that I'm over the open floor plan concept. Like I want a split floor plan. I want everyone to have their own sides. I want, you know, there to be like a meeting in the middle, but I just feel like housing now is so open concept. And while I think it's gorgeous, I just am turned off by it now. Like I saw a TikTok that I related to so much where it was like, I don't want to be cooking bacon and then have my couch smell like bacon because it's like so open in that area. And I was like, honestly, so true. Let's bring back like living rooms, not right by the kitchen. You know what I mean? Something that's really big for us is school district, making sure it's in a good school district, making sure it's in an area where Trig can have neighborhood friends and things like that. I feel like those are some of my fondest memories growing up is literally like going over to a friend's house and playing with like Bratz dolls or like running around and looking for golf balls um, and just like doing things like that, watching shows together. That was like one of my favorite things to do after school as a kid and I wanna give my kids like that same thing. A lot of people ask how we're gonna raise Trig now that we're not religious and I feel like that's a great question 
I feel like how I was raised, even though I was raised Lutheran, we didn't go to church a lot. Uh, and obviously in the Mormon religion, you have a lot of rules to follow, things to follow, how to raise kids, you know, how to, how to be a family. Like you're kind of told how to do everything, honestly. My biggest thing, and I feel like whether you're religious or not, is to have good morals and values. So, you know, I'm going to teach my kids to be nice. I'm going to teach them to give back. I'm going to teach them to treat others the way they want to be treated, say please and thank you. And I feel like we do a good job of that with Trig. So I think as much as it's great to feel like you have a purpose and believe in a higher power, and I, I think that everyone should just believe what they want. That's another thing I'm going to teach them is to just be loving and accepting of everyone. I think that's very important. Um, I think that it's just the most important to teach them to have good morals and values. And you know, if Trig has questions later, then we'll teach him about that. But that's like my main thing is I just want him to know that he just needs to be a good person. You know what I mean? Okay, a lot of people have asked how we got Trig's name. Trig's name is actually a family name. So that's where we got it from. Brady's great, great grandpa has Trig's exact name. So Trig is Trig, his middle name, Kaiser um, the second. So like, I just think that's really special and actually when Brady and I were first dating that was something he told me was he was like I want my son to be named Trig and I think that's just so crazy because like that was such a long time ago and so it's weird to think that now like that's literally our son's name but that's where we got it from it's a family name it's not something that we just you know thought of I honestly would have never thought of the name Trig if you had just been like oh think of a name I would have been like uh henry uh oliver like those are all cute names that i had thought of but i'm so glad we named him trey because i just feel like it is so unique and it literally fits him so perfectly like so perfectly okay someone i think this is a good question to end with someone asked i love the youtube idea but why better pay i'm not doing youtube for money at all obviously like i know hearing from other people that youtube pays well i'm not getting paid yet so i have no idea what it's gonna be like but i just have been asked for so long from you guys to bring longer form content into the mix and i've actually started youtube channels before i started like three youtube channels when i was younger for like the most random stuff and then never ended up following through with them which i blame on my adhd and the fact that i was like literally 12 years old so it's probably good that i didn't start my digital blueprint that young um, but I'm starting YouTube just because you guys have asked for it. I have a passion for talking your ears off. And so, you know, the 10 minute feature on TikTok is great, but I think YouTube is like where longer form content has always been home. And, um, I always grew up watching YouTube vlogs. So I think it'll be fun to just like show you guys a new side of my life talk to you guys in longer form like we're just on facetime like it just feels so fun and i just love you guys so much and i'm so grateful for this community this is my favorite perfume ever right now it's baccarat rouge and it's expensive but literally one spray and it will last you all day okay i feel like i answered um no questions but also a lot of questions all in one because i talked for like 45 minutes so if you guys have any other questions, let me know and I can do like a part two Q&A, but it's fun to just like chit chat, talk about life, and hopefully you guys learned more about me and my life. Um, but I love you guys so much. I hope you have an amazing day. I'm so excited to vlog our trip to Bora Bora. I think it is going to be amazing. Anyways, I love you guys so much and thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, please. I love saying that. <laughs>